Hi guys. Do not adjust your screens. It is Christine here filming a floss tube video. Finally, it's been six months, right? Let me see. I, I did my flossoween in October. Okay, not quite six months, but almost. If I would have waited till the end of this month. Anyway, I'm here. I'm in my car. The hardest part is done. I gathered up all of the stuff that I want to talk about. I hauled it out into my car and that was a lot of work. And that is why one of the reasons why I just have been putting this off. Plus I keep thinking, oh, I want to get a little bit farther on this whip before I show you guys. And you know, I just keep making excuses, but I got an email today from somebody and thank you for those that have reached out wondering where I'm at. I'm doing fine, but I got an email from a lovely person today that said, did you take down your most recent videos? Cause I don't see any since October. And I was like, no, I haven't filmed any since October. So here I am to film a floss tube video. It's probably not going to be pretty. I haven't done this in a while, no rehearsal. And if it's choppy, it's because I tend to ramble on and on and on when I haven't talked to you guys in a while. So if you just see me like cut out and cut back in again, it's because I just edited out a bunch of unnecessary rambling. So yeah, that might happen. Okay. So, um, what, what, what am I going to talk about first? Where have I been? I guess I'll just briefly go into where I've been. It's nothing, nothing major. Uh, I just, after I filmed in October, I hadn't really decided that I wasn't going to make any videos. I just, you know, I don't know, November hit. I just blame it on anxiety. I just got, uh, I, I was just noticing that every time I got on social media, it was just so toxic. And I thought, you know, I need to take a break. I just decided for an entire week in the beginning of November that I wasn't going to get on any social media at all. And I have to say, I highly recommend that because what ended up happening is wasn't, was what I kind of didn't expect is that I, I actually had a hard time getting back into it again. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, I can be okay without checking, you know, Instagram 15 times a day. Facebook, I would actually, I've kind of been distancing myself from Facebook for the most part for a while. And, but I can't pull the plug completely sadly because I'm on a lot of groups on there, private groups that I pay for, for my business. And so I can't really get, I can't cut the cord on that one, which I really wish I could, but you know, things are still tied in with Facebook. So Instagram is really it. And I just, you know, I started not checking often and then and then what I was noticing is kind of weird is that I, after not checking and being involved in the stitching community, I started feeling like I was becoming kind of isolated from it. You know, things were happening, you know, the world moves on. And, and then I would start hearing people talk about things and I, you know, in the stitching community and things that were happening. And I started feeling kind of out of place with it. Like, wow, I'm just kind of, it's like, if you don't stay in with that and keep up with the times, you start to lose touch with what's going on with all the stitchers and all the stitch alongs and and I don't know I just kind of became isolated I I hold myself up and just um kept my distance for a while and it wasn't a bad thing I just I don't know it's just kind of hard to explain and then finally the end of the year was coming and I thought gosh just for my own records on Instagram I wanted to, to uh, post some pictures of some things that I've been doing so I kind of finally posted something I think for the first time stitching related toward the end of the year and this might be one of those rambles that I cut out because I'm starting to wonder if anybody really cares so anyway I'll, I'll keep talking anyway because it's better to have the footage and edit it out than to not have it at all so here I go <laughs> anyway I posted at the end you know in Instagram the end of the year some of the things that I had been doing and then I thought okay first of the year I'm going to be good. I'm going to get back into Instagram again. I'm going to start posting. I'm going to start engaging with other stitchers and liking and commenting. And, you know, here it is April and I still haven't fully got into it. I just haven't had, I haven't been in the mood to post pictures on Instagram. It's just sometimes feels like too much. And then when you don't have to do a floss tube video in a while, you know, you start thinking, oh gosh, it's going to, you know, what am I going to talk about? And then, oh, it's been so long and I got to gather up all that stuff. I know I sound like I'm just whining here, but <laughs> I just like I owe you an explanation for what oh I forgot when I stitched this or when I finished this and I you know what if I forget you know what I wanted to say about that because if I'm anything I'm not a journaler I try to be a journaler I try to say I'm gonna be good I even bought myself a journal which of course I forgot to bring that out because it's not 
it's not in the forefront of my mind because I don't journal. That's the person I want to be. I want to be somebody that just writes down when I'm starting a project and, you know, if I'm starting it on a special day, when I finished it, how long it took me, you know, and I just can't. I, the beginning of the year was going to be different. I'm, I'm going to journal this year. I'm going to write down all these things about my stitching and I have not written down a single thing. So this is really going to just be winging it. And I figured, you know, like my husband has said, he's like, just get on and just, you know, do a short video just to get back into it again. And I was going to do that, but it's like, where do I start? So I just got it all. I got it all out here, but I am going to tell you that I may cut this video into smaller chunks and upload it separately if it's really long. If it's not, I don't know, if it's under an hour and you already know that because you know how long this video is, then I might keep it all because technically I don't think it's going to take me a lot, a lot of time to talk about all this stuff that I have over here. I think what I just said, talking about why I've been gone, was probably going to take the longest. I may put that at the end. In other news, though, I did give myself a haircut, a DIY haircut. I think I did pretty good with it. I'm not going to take my headband off here because then my bangs will hang in my eyes. But I watched some YouTube videos. This was back, I don't know when I did it. Uh, but after I had, yeah, I did like something where you, it's, it's kind of like a, unicorn I call it the unicorn hair where you just pull all of your hair in front and you put it in a ponytail and in front of your hair like the in front of your head so you look like a unicorn and then you know I just kind of angled my head and hair and just cut it like that and it gives you like this perfect layering it wasn't wasn't ideally perfect I had to kind of go in and and uh, just do a little bit of cutting myself but then after I had done that and I watched several videos uh, then Tina at Oh gosh, what's her channel now? Simply, simply in stitches. I know she's changed her channel name a couple, but she uploaded a DIY haircut tutorial, which pretty much shows exactly like how I cut my hair. So if you have a, like a layered haircut, so I took a few inches off, but yeah, I don't know. It's kind of like, meh. I think I just might just keep on doing that. I gave my boys uh, one haircut and then he didn't want me to, he didn't want me to cut his hair again. So now it's just gotten super long. My older son my younger son has had, I've given him a couple haircuts and I've completely just annihilated his hair. Poor guy. He said he doesn't care because he's not going anywhere anyway, but <laughs> I, they're both excited to get back to their uncle Jeff for proper haircuts. And, uh, I've been cutting my husband's hair for years. So he's the only one that wasn't affected because I just kept on cutting his like I always do. That might be one of those things I cut out because do you really care? Probably not. Okay. Let's get on to some stitching. I want to show you this first because I don't think I ever showed showed this. I made this last year, this crocheted chocolate bunny. And you can see the white underneath there. I should have probably did it with brown. But I found this pattern on Etsy. And if I remember to put the link below, I just think that this is the cutest thing ever. I mean, it even has like the seam on it, like a chocolate bunny would have. And yes, I bought the pattern on Etsy. And I crocheted this probably not last year, maybe the year before. And I don't think I ever showed it on my channel. And I've... Uh, I don't think I've ever taken a picture of it, even for Instagram, but is this the cutest chocolate little bunny? I love it. I should have stuffed it a little bit more. It's a little bit flimsy, but cute. So I did want to show you that. Okay, let's get on to some cross stitching. Let's start with FFOs, fully finished objects. Um, so I'm trying to think back all the way. So after November, uh, I think what when I took my little hiatus from cross stitch from um, Insta, social media, I don't know if I had said on my last channel that I was going to start this one. Now this is a a kit from Dimensions that I bought that I found on uh, I think I got it on Mercari, an old one as you can tell it's got a, that very vintage that eighties nineties look to it. Um, but the reason why I was inspired to stitch this is because, and I had talked about this, I know, on my last video, I think when I showed when I bought this, that uh, during the pandemic early on, and I, I know a lot of people, I had asked this question in my last video if a lot of people had done this. And actually, surprisingly enough, a lot there are people in different parts of the world that actually did this where we all put teddy bears in our windows so that the kids can drive, little kids can drive by and spot teddy bears in the windows when we were all in that uh, early quarantine and I 
had put a Winnie the Pooh in my window. And I'll, if I can find the picture of it, I'll insert it here because I did take a picture of it when I took that picture. But then when I saw this cross stitch pattern, I thought, I have to get that. I have to stitch that. That's going to be my commemorative piece for the pandemic. Now, this says, happy is the heart filled with love. And I wanted to change that saying. And I waffled back and forth and back and forth on what I was going to put there to kind of encompass the pandemic. You know, I was like, stay home, stay safe. Uh, you know, or I was going to put pandemic, whatever, something. Because I'm kind of thinking, okay, years down the road, if somebody finds this in a thrift shop, you know, I want them to kind of know that it was a pandemic piece. But I thought, I don't want to just blatantly say pandemic, you know, 2021, uh, 2020. Um, so I thought, well, I'll leave a little mystery of it. I'll put a hint of it that like, maybe if you know the year and then anyway, I just gave it a lot of thought and I couldn't decide what to put. So I'm happy to say that not only did I finish this, but I framed it also and decided to put, let's stay home 2020. And I thought that that was just kind of the perfect subtle thing. Like if I wanted to put this in my house right now, hey, yeah, let's stay home. We're still staying home right now. Although I did get my first vaccine. My whole family, we all got our first Pfizer vaccine a week ago. Didn't have any symptoms except a really sore arm. And I think for some reason, mine got the sorest out of everybody. I told my family it's because I have the strongest arm muscles. Of course, that didn't go over well with my sons. They say they do because they play games all the time, you know, and they really have to use that gaming arm. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know why my arm got sore than theirs, but uh, it's gone. I'm fine. And we get our second one. Yeah, in a couple weeks or whenever that is. Okay, back to this again. Yes, this is a fully finished object. So cute. Yeah, it's a little dated, you know. But, I mean, that I just thought it was so cute because I actually put a Winnie the Pooh in my window. And then I saw this pattern. It was meant to be. So, yes, the year we all stayed home. Okay, I don't think there's anything else I need to say about that. Uh, this one's not an FFO, but it is almost an FFO. As a matter of fact, this is one of those things where I'm like, I should just finish that before I do my floss tube video so I can show it. But I thought, nope. So, Blue Ribbon Designs, Belinda, has a floss tube channel. and But I didn't know that because I learned it after I was watching Lori at Mischievous Stitches. Because she's the one that posted that Belinda from Blue Ribbon Designs had a floss tube channel and she did this little um if you watch her which i'm sure everybody probably does she posted that um belinda had a tutorial on how to make this little i'm not showing it yet but as you can see i'm gonna i, I did mine a little bit different but it's a pattern that she that i bought from etsy that you put are supposed to put in one of the vintage ball ball jar lids which i didn't have any at the time but i had current ball jar lids that i thought oh i can make that work so I bought the pattern and I stitched it in an evening and I did make some changes, but this is what it looks like right now. Now I made some changes to my Robin. Uh, I think, so the pattern has two birds, a blue bird and a uh, Robin, Robin red, red Robin. Now I changed my Robin a little bit because I felt like her Robin was maybe more, looked a little bit more like the European Robin where I wanted mine to look more like the American Robin. So I changed the color slightly to have more of that kind of that burnt orange color. And then I put the eye ring. I did a little back stitching for the eye ring. If you can see it, uh, it's probably not focusing enough on there, but can you see the little eye ring there? And I changed, what else did I change? Oh yeah, I think I added these flowers. Uh, she had them a different color and I charted them to look like daffodils. I didn't chart them. I just changed. I just found some uh, DMC floss that look like uh, daffodils because, yeah, I think that's the only change I made. So she does a really cute finish with hers. Now I'm going to get some little vintage pom-poms to put around here. And then I'm also going to get some vintage ribbon to... Uh, color this but this is just your regular ball jar you know like the current ones that you could get and I so the way she finishes hers you don't have to do anything with the bottom but I had to so actually I'll pop this out to show you how I uh kind of what I did it's not pretty looks like a hamburger doesn't it so I just took a piece of cardboard at the bottom what what actually I gathered this around was the um actual lid for the ball you know the part that goes in the insert for the lid 
And that's what I put as the base for this because I was just going to pop that down in there and then I realized it would sink down too low. So then I put some pieces of cardboard there. Then I took a piece of mat board and just took some fabric and, you know, sandwiched it and glued it all together. And so now it just pops down in there like this and I'm going to glue it, but it, it just pops down, fits nice and snug in there. And then I'm going to just do some trim around that. Now I was thinking of hanging a ribbon and making it like a just like a Christmas ornament. And she does show, uh, the name of the pattern is called Under My Wing and you're supposed to tuck a little needle under that. So as soon as I'm done uh, with the fully finished, so I don't poke myself, I'll stick the needle in there. But yeah, I think that's just super cute. And a really easy project that you can just do in like an evening. So, all right, let's move on. So those are fully finished. I think that's the only thing. Now then, what else was I working on? Last time, way back in October, I had started this for Flossoween and I don't think I, I don't think I had sh showed my finish. I was almost done with it, but I don't think I was completely done with it yet. So I did finish that way back up, um, back in November. And this is what it looks like. This is the finish of it. Let me... So this is by, um, sorry, Pumpkins for Sale by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet. And that was my finish on that. I ended up not stitching uh, the spines of the pumpkins. I ended up leaving those just plain, uh, just unstitched, because I thought it looked a little bit, um, it, they stood out a little bit more. But that's cute. And then if you remember, I had posted a little tutorial or how to on doing the little fringe because I made mine a little dimensional by adding a little bit of uh, just some fringe around there to make it look like hay and I have a video of how I did that so I had fully intended on turning this into a cushion and I even bought a bunch of Lori Holtz uh, one of her fabric bundles because I was going to uh, do a little almost like a quilted Mm, kind of like border around it and uh, stuff the pillow because I really got into a mode where I wanted to do some quilting way back in the fall too and I bought a bunch of fabric from Lori Holt and uh, I never did I never did and then the feeling left and so now I have the fabric and I never made anything with it so but I will I will as soon as fall hits I definitely will go revisit that again and do do that Okay, what else did I finish? So then, I'm trying to remember. I think at some point I might have started stitching some new projects around then, but I know when December hit, I told myself I need to finish my Santa, my Santa project that I've been working on every Christmas for probably about, I don't know, this might be my fourth Christmas, maybe. This uh, Santa's, Santa's Secret. And I didn't have a lot left to do. I know I had a lot of his beard left to do. And most of the greenery over here. And uh, yeah, the, the rest of this area over here. So I do know that I worked on that in December. I keep watching the time here to make sure I'm staying good at, in, within a normal range of time. Uh, so let's see where we did that. Now this one I had to attached if you're wondering why there's fabric attached on the outside of this oh I didn't even iron him look at he's fresh off the hoop from December uh so yeah he just wasn't fitting in the hoop well at all and so or maybe I wanted to put him in the Q snap so I just sewed some fabric on to the edge of this so that I could finish him but there he is I think he turned out so good I just love it but I didn't uh yeah, I was over it. I was over it by the time I was done, so I didn't frame him or anything. But I will. I'll get him framed for this next Christmas. As you can see, I clearly just took him off the hoop, roll, hoop rolled him up, and put him away because those glasses right there, I would say in all of my cross-stitching years, that was the most challenging thing I ever did was couching that because it's like thick. Um, well, it's not thick. It's It's... Cording would have been cool, but it's um, just a combination of a couple of like uh, maybe three strands of the, the gold. So that's hard to work with. And then trying to 
wrangle it up while you're trying to couch it down and this one right here is a little his glasses are a little lopsided right there they're not really the shape I want them to be but I just tell myself that he sat on them a few times and they got a little bent because no way am I going to redo that it is done it's the way it is and I held it up and asked my husband I said do you see anything odd about this and he didn't and even when I pointed it out he's like oh I would have never noticed that and he's like a perfectionist that perfectionist engineering type and he said that didn't bother him so I'm like okay if it doesn't bother you it probably isn't going to bother anybody and then I asked both my boys and they're like oh we don't even notice it so it is what it is and you might not have even noticed it either but it does bug me I just want to like square that off a little bit on the bottom you know but it's it's done I'm not going to take it apart I'll be cursing myself if I undo it and be like why did I why did I undo that it was fine so there's Santa's secret all done there was a little bit of couching here as you can see some of the shimmering there but okay that's probably all there is to say about that now some point so now we're going to move on to whips or works in progress if you will if you're new by the way speaking of new I always forget to welcome you guys back to my channel I should have said this at the beginning welcome to my channel it's that simple welcome back to my channel thank you so much for subscribing I reached another milestone and I surpassed 6,000 subscribers I haven't checked lately I may have lost a few because I've been gone but thank you so much for subscribing to my channel I really just really appreciate it and it also does make me think oh my gosh I need to get some videos out there I've had all these subscribers that are you know wanting to see they subscribe to my channel for a reason I need to give them content so thank you so much for that I do appreciate it it's still quite unbelievable but okay I started so now we're like I said we're gonna move on to what works in progress where are they I had myself kind of organized here okay so sometime back in the fall I don't know when I should have wrote down at least when I started this I can't believe I didn't but I started uh, I had bought a pattern Oh, where's it at? Oh, yes. A long time ago, my husband found this for me on eBay. I had seen it stitched way a long time ago, years ago, and I never forgot about it. And I, I, it came up on eBay, and I tell a story in an earlier video about how he surprised me with that. We were watching the auction, and, you know, at the time I was like, well, I paid too, you know, that was just too much for that. But I don't know, you know, when you really want a cross-stitch pattern, really, is there... Is there a limit to how much you will pay we all have our limits but anyway I have always loved this pattern and I thought why not start it you know sometimes I like patterns and I just like to have them and keep them because I just like knowing I have them and other times I just thought no I want to start it so I started this pattern this back in the fall and I just love how dimensional it looks um, it just pops off the page so this is what I've gotten done so far one of the birdhouses so there it is again I'll just do the little picture right there next to it so or no you guys can't see it can't even see the one I did so yes I did the okay sorry for the glare anyway there it is what do I have to say about this yes what I have to say about this and I don't ask me how I remember this it just hit me is that I had to swap out the fabric because I I stole the fabric from this pattern um, when I stitched my what's that one with the geese winter winter geese um, because somebody had gifted me that pattern and they had started it on a, a fabric that they swapped out from the kit also and when I was calculating it I, I thought it was going to end up being too small so I restarted it again on a fabric and I stole it from this kit because it had the same size and color I think it was that dub gray and so then when I went to go stitch this it didn't have fabric in it so I have I got this to use instead so I don't know how close it is to dove gray uh, to dove gray that comes in dimensions but this one's called touch of gray and even if it's not close I need to hold it up one of these days I was going to compare it to the fabric in on that I stitched on winter geese but I think it looks fine I think it's a nice gray 
color. So yes, did I say the name of that pattern in case you're wondering? It's called Winter Birdhouses and it's uh, from 1999 dimensions. It's an old one. So, okay, let's move on, moving on. Let me put that back in there. Ooh, just about lost my needle. Dangling on the edge. Okay, I'll just put all this stuff away after. So, okay, that's maybe the second hardest part about filming a floss tube video. Gathering all the stuff one, and then having to put it all the way to. Okay, let's set that there. Uh, next, what did I work on next? Like I said, I think these are in no particular order. Yeah, I think that's, oh. Okay, so this is what we'll do. Um, I will do them in order. So I feel like that's, that's all I did in the fall. And then Christmas Day, I got a couple of cross stitch kits from my uh, boys for Christmas and one of them I was like okay this is going to be my new year new new year's day start so that's what I was going to do well Christmas day came to an end and I said heck with it I'm going to start it today this will be my Christmas day start so I did I started this on Christmas day and it is uh, this is one of the ones that I think I did post a picture of. This one right here, Winter Cabin. I had seen this. I, yeah, I'm I'm a little. Okay, hopefully you can see that from the glare. Sorry, but I'm not going to take it out of the container. But you could see it's just a beautiful scene, and I love it. I've been intimidated. I ha I I tend to veer away from the full coverage dimensions kits because. I have already one going. I think I just have one that's full coverage, and that's Balloon Glow. And, you know, I realize that's going to take a lot of years to do. I mean, it's not a heaven and earth design big, but for me, a full coverage design is big. And I started this on Christmas Day, so it ended up being... I didn't start anything new on New Year's Day. So this is kind of like my Christmas Day, New Year's Day start. And I started it, and I stitched on this thing all of January straight through. I couldn't even put down. I think even in February, I stitched on it to just couldn't put it down. I enjoyed it. I, I hooked it up on my Q-snaps and put it on my floor frame. And so when we would watch TV in the evenings, I would just stitch away on it. And you want to see what it looks like, right? So I still have it on. Okay. So this is what I've gotten done on it so far. So, and I've done the back stitching two so there's going to be you can see the outline of a little deer butt right there so that's going to be the second deer and uh I was going to wait and do the cardinal but I was getting close to that and I thought you know what I'm going to do the cardinal and I know that I stitched that so yeah I guess I was still working on this in March because I stitched that on uh March 17th which is my dad's birthday and he passed away in 2013 so I stitched that uh just because you know cardinals and people that have passed on it was a good <laughs> a good a good day to stitch a cardinal so I haven't backstitched the cardinal yet but I've backstitched everything else up to this point so yay me I'll be thanking myself for that when I get done because the other side of this pattern over here all these trees that's gonna be that is going to be some hairy backstitching over there, I'll tell you. I should have started with that. I think I started with the better part of the design, which I don't usually like to do. I like to save the, be the better parts for last. But you might be wondering what this is, and you may already know. So I was watching Julie over at Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, and she showed this thing. I'll show you from the side there how it rises up. It is a little magnetic ort catcher that she got from It's Charm School. And I saw that thing and I said, that is exactly what I need because I always have these little, I don't have a little ort catcher. As a matter of fact, I need to get it, maybe another one of these, but it's this little thing and it's filled with felt. You can see that. And you just stuff your little uh, orts, old ratty threads as you stitch them and you stick them down in there and they just stick to the thread. 
I mean, they stick to the felt and you can just keep stuffing them and stuffing them, stuffing them. And it's so great. I really need one of these on every project, but so far I just bought that one and I just think it's so cute. I think she hand makes those um, out of clay, but highly recommend it. And it's got uh, these little backside magnets have these little, little glitter flowers on them. So cute. So it's Charm School on Etsy. I will try to remember to put that link below, but I can't promise uh, that I'm going to do too well with my links this time. I, I don't know. Anyway, Winter's Cabin. I'm stitching it on the fabric that it came with, which is, I believe, an 18 count. So I still have that set up in the basement on my floor frame. So when I watch TV down there, I usually work on that. Um, I have like three main stitching spots in my house. I have one in my main floor um, that I normally stitch at that just kind of, if I have time during the day, then I'll stitch there. And then I, up in my room, we have a couple of chairs up in our room. And when I have coffee with my husband in the morning before he walks down the hall to go to work, um, and I walk down the hall to go, the, the hall to go to work myself, we have coffee and a lot of times I'll stitch. And so the project that I'm stitching up in that stitchy spot is this, uh, another dimensions kit. Yeah. Do you know, do you see a trend here? I have just been on a dimensions kit kick big time lately. I just, I don't know. I've just, I, I've always loved dimensions, but I have just been really all about the dimensions. It seems like, I think this is going to be like dimension stitching year. So this is a new one I saw, had to get it because my dad had a truck that looked exactly like that when I was growing up. This is called flower truck. And when I saw that, I just, for the truck itself, I mean, I wish that they would come out with another pattern like this that has pumpkins in the, in the back, in the back end of it. So I started that, don't know when, sometime in January or February, maybe even March, maybe January, February. And this is how much I've gotten on it so far. There's a little thread hanging right there. So that's my work on in the morning project, but actually it was, that's been now replaced pro with my current whip and you'll see that in a minute. Uh, but yes, this was, I've kind of stopped this one a little bit, kind of, um, it's just been put on hold. I don't know why just moved on to other things. I did start another project right around the time I was working on this. Um, don't remember what the occasion was for this. I just saw it and I had to have it. I have never stitched a Bothy threads before. I have another one in my kit. It was gifted to me and it's a European Robin and it's so cute. And I just saw this hummingbird and I just thought it was just so cute. I don't really remember how I saw it or how I found it, but just knew I had to have it. And so I started it and this is as far as I've gotten on it, let me put a, I think I have to put something behind it. Oh, maybe not. So there. Beautiful, beautiful colors. And I don't think there's any back stitching on this. So yeah, maybe just a little tiny bit of back stitching around the eye that needs to be done. But yes, really beautiful. So worked on that, but didn't work on it long. And started something else. When did I start? Oh gosh, now I'm trying to think. When did I start this one? I probably, I know I started this on a special occasion because I feel like there was a special occasion that I started this on. But really, why does it matter when I start something when I don't even write down why I started it? But this is another kit that I found. I think I got this on Mercari too. And it is called Goldfinch Gathering. I had never seen this before. So of course I had to buy it. It's an older kit. Uh, looks like it's 1997. And I got a big old whopping start on that one. That's all I did. Which makes me think that I did start this for an occasion. 
because I, I remember feeling like I need to get some stitches in before the day is done. And then I did and I haven't touched it since and I can't remember. I can't remember why I started this. It doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, so let's put that away. And I think I only have one more work in progress to show. Oh, this is, I'm just going to toss this over here and clean up the, clean up the aftermath later. Whew. All right. Ah, everything's teetering over. And my last and final work in progress is an oldie but a goodie. So my stitch along friend, Kim. Hi, Kim. Uh, we have been working on this one together, Balloon Glow. This was our new year, new start for... Did we start that? Kim, did we start it in 2020 or no? Did we start this in 2020? Yes, this was our new year, new start for 2020, Balloon Glow Stitch Along. I don't th I hope it wasn't 2019 that we did that. I think it was 2020. And I worked a lot on it at uh, last year early on and then put it away and just hadn't really felt the need to get back to this one again. And then I had said something to her about maybe uh, in March we could do it because both of us had sort of, you know, I had started on this end. I start, We started in the middle. I worked this direction and she worked that direction. So she has a lot of this part done and I was doing a lot of this and I think I was just getting burned out with all the green down there. So we said, hey, let's get us, let's get this out, pull it out in March and we'll each stitch a balloon because that'll kind of motivate us. Hey, let's get some color. Let's get out of the greenery and get some uh, balloons done. So I did. As a matter of fact, I feel like I was just going to pull it out and I was going to just stitch a balloon and then put it away again. Well, as sometimes happens with those things, you start stitching them and you can't stop. So that's kind of what happened with this. And so this one, let me put something behind it here. Oh, pardon me while I find there. Because I think it's going to have a glare. So look at what I've gotten done on this, people. I went up and stitched that balloon. Now it's not backstitched because I was still doing a little bit of the sky around it, but so I had had all of this lower part, all of this was already stitched and done. And there's not much over here on that side to see. So that's basically kind of getting close to the halfway point there. But I stitched this balloon and then when I was done, I thought, okay, I'm gonna go up to that upper corner and I'm gonna start stitching up there and then sort of work my way down because I think one of the things I didn't like about this pattern was that I was kind of working from the bottom up and I don't really like that direction as much. I, I prefer to work top to bottom and I usually don't start in the middle, but I did start this one in the middle and so I kind of worked my way over and I just don't like the direction I was going. So I, it felt labored. It's almost like writing with your left hand. You know, it just doesn't feel like a natural way to go. So I really wanted to go up and find that corner up there and start stitching my way down. So I went up here and then I'm, I'm just kind of starting to stitch down this way. And that sky is all half stitches and it just goes so fast. I, I just couldn't put it down. I'm absolutely loving this right now. So this is my obsessive piece. As a matter of fact, I took a I just now recently moved it um, down the Q-snap so I could get down in this corner. And there's a lot of little areas down here I need to fill in and I want to get this corner done. And then I'm just going to kind of start to work down this way and meet up with what I've already stitched. And you can see there's an outline for a little balloon there and an outline for another balloon there. So, But I'm going to hold off on that because I found that was a good way to when I put this away for a while to pull it back out and if I know like I can just jump right in and stitch those balloons um yeah it, it would be so yeah my goal I would really love to get all that done before I put it away but I don't know so that I think is the end I think we have reached the end of it so I have been doing a lot of stitching as you can see and just haven't been sharing a lot of it. So I do apologize for that, but I'm gonna to try to be, now that we're back on track again, I'm gonna to try to be better about uh, doing some regular videos again, you know, just, it's just so much easier all the way around because the editing's easier, the what I haven't showed you is easier. So, oh, we're not done. I forgot, I was gonna show you haul. So let's, let's move into that. If you don't like haul, I say that to the end. Uh, things that I have purchased, since we were last together. And 
I do have to tell you that there, I will have some more to show you soon because Mill Hill has come out with their new fall designs. And of course, I don't know what it is about Mill Hill and their fall designs, but they just get me. So yeah, I'm probably going to go a little crazy with that again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess that's right. I was doing all those mill hills at the end of the year. And then this year I haven't felt like doing any mill hills. I don't think I've done. Yeah. I haven't even touched any mill hills. Like I said, I went right from mill hill obsession to my dimensions obsession. So, okay. So what have I bought? Um, pull this out. Well, the most recent thing I got, just because um, I will go ahead and talk about that since we were already talking about uh, Blue Ribbon Designs. This is a pattern that she has had that I have been eyeing forever and ever. And I thought, well, since I was buying that other pattern, the under my wing bird pattern in the little tin, that I may as well get this one. Because it's just so cute. And you can finish them up as little pillows here, or you can just do like a whole sampler. But... I love that, that one. So Blue Ribbon Designs, and it is called Frolic in the Foliage. And so I'm happy that I do finally have that. Now, I did hear um, Lori from Mischievous Stitches was saying something about a Blue Ribbon Design stitch along. I do believe that they are going to start that maybe on April 15th. If I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go watch that video again and see. But yeah, I may start this for that stitch along and uh, get that going. Maybe I'll have it done by fall. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, back when uh, I told you I got two kits for Christmas from my boys, this was the other one. This one is called Holiday Village. You've all seen, I'm sure. It's another big, full coverage. And if I could get Winter Cabin done this year, that would be an, that's a lofty goal. But if I could get Winter Cabin done by the end of this year, um, I may start this as my next year's focus piece but yes full coverage again it looks full coverage but yeah the sky's all half stitches so that goes fast but yeah that's going to be good okay that um and then going on still with the dimensions like i said obsession i found this one and um i blame i think luda for this because I think she said something about, I don't know if she showed this on her channel or maybe she did. Maybe I was watching an older video, but she had said something like, you better get this because it might be going out of print. And that's all you need to say to me to get me to go buy one because, yeah, dimensions, they do go out of, kit, out of um, print. And so, yeah, there's just something serene about this piece, you know, that I love. You know what it reminds me of? You know, you look at a piece and you just are drawn to it for some reason. This reminds me of like a diorama that you would see at the museum. I just love museum dioramas. That's one of those things that when I was a kid, I thought when I grow up, I want to be the person that makes dioramas in the museum. I still want to be a person that does dioramas in a museum. But, yeah, probably missed the boat on that one. <laughs> anyway... I digress. Okay. Yeah. That was, I actually was going to start that in February, but I think that's not, it's not full coverage, but it's probably full. Well, yeah, it's really beautiful. I need to start that in the, in the, in the fall, maybe. Yes. Um, now back to some spring designs. This is just one I've been eyeing for a while and I thought it might go out of print and I should get it. So I got it. Don't know, don't have any plans for when I'm going to start that one, but it's just a small one, but, and it's not even a gold, so it shouldn't take too long to stitch that. Then, looking somewhere, I think I must have been on Mercari again and found this old vintage beauty here called Birdhouse Garden. Because I envision myself someday having a room with all of my birdhouse cross stitches completed and framed hanging on the wall. And this will be a nice one to add to the collection. So that is pretty. One of those old ones that needs to be sorted. I guess I should show you the backs of these because sometimes it's kind of fun to see the colors. So that was the, the geese. And yes, this was the back of the Holiday Village. 
some beautiful colors there. Yes. And this was the goldfinch. Okay, and I think we're, we're getting close, we're getting close to the end. Uh, this one is another old one I found, and uh, after I bought it, I'm not sure what I think about it anymore. It's really pretty from a distance, but then when I actually got the chart, it's, I don't know, looking at it up close, I may just stitch that center part and not do the border. That border just is too repetitive. I mean, I can tell I would lose interest in that because it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. But I do like just this middle area there, which would look perfectly fine. And it's that's the back of it. So it is sorted. And it looks like it's got some Fiddler's Ada there. So that is um, Needle Treasures. I have never stitched a Needle Treasures before. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It had me at Birdhouse. Okay, then... I was watching Michelle over at Michelle's Romantic Triangle, Tangle back in a while ago, and she was showing all the new kits that were coming out by Riolis, and I spied this one and had to have it. So, as, isn't that beautiful? I have never stitched a Riolis kit. I have a Riolis kit, I think a fox, and I have never stitched it. So this one, though, I do have a blue house, a bird, blue... Blue Jay, that's what I'm trying to say. I do have a Blue Jay project in progress that I need to finish probably before I start another Blue Jay, but that is just so pretty. And I'm just dying to uh, you, to stitch a Riolis to see what that, uh, the, they're like, I think they're wool acrylic threads. I've heard people either love them or hate them. So they look very fuzzy. So I need to give it a try. Oh, but look at that one too. I want that. So maybe if I end up liking Riolis, I'll stitch that one next. Very cute. Yeah, Riolis has a lot of really nice kits. I do like them. So I'll have to see what I think about it. Um, what is that on? It doesn't say what count the fabric is, but yeah. It looks like maybe 18 count. Oh no, it says 14 count, I think. Okay, so that uh, we've got four more kits left to go. And these are along the lines of uh, Mill Hill. I did buy some Mill Hills, and there I got four of these birds. So let's just show you up close one. There's something interesting about these, is that they're not stitched on perforated paper like the usual Mill Hills. They actually have brown Ada. Can you see that fabric? I know it's kind of hard with the glare. Maybe I'll open one up. Let's let's just open let's just open one up and see what's inside. Okay, yeah, see that's what it looks like. So it's some brown Ada fabric, nice and stiff, and this is about the size that it is. So, yeah. So it. And let me see, I think the designer, uh, this is, I think Debbie, is this Debbie Mum or? Yeah, it's, so Debbie Mum has some Mill Hill kits. As a matter of fact, the, the new ones that came out, she has a set of herbs like rosemary and basil and thyme that are also on fabric. So her, her Mill Hill uh, kits usually, those are the beads right there. Not very many. I mean, for this, oh no, I guess there's a few more beads in there. But, yeah, I'm excited to start that. I couldn't decide which color I wanted, so I just got all four. So let's look at that again and see. Just kind of a whimsical little bird. And so, yes, it comes with an orange, yellow. These are called Out on a Limb. And then that's the yellow bird. This one is Aqua. And Blue. So, yeah, those are going to be fun to stitch. I don't know when I'm going to do that. One of these days, I'm going to start one of those. I uh, have a lot. So, I think we have come to the end. We have, we have come to the end of this. And 
I think that I don't have anything else to say, but I'm going to put you on pause because almost always, as soon as I stop the video, I remember something I was going to say. So I am going to put you on pause and gather my thoughts once again and make sure that I didn't forget anything. And uh, yeah, let me do that right now. Okay, yeah, I don't think there was anything else I had to say. I uh, just maybe was going to talk about my plans going forward. And I don't have any. I don't really have any plans. Probably the only plan I have is to start on, I need to make myself a note to start the blue, um, uh, blue ribbon design because I know the hashtag for that was something about tax day, blue ribbon design, stitch along something or other. So check out Lori's channel for that that hashtag and uh yeah my plans are just to I would love I have all my works in progress that I haven't touched any of them for a long time um oh yeah stitch mania so yeah I don't like I said I'm not in the stitch mania Facebook group but I did hear through the grapevine that they are closing down and this is going to be the last stitch mania in May so I wasn't going to participate in stitch mania this year um but if I do, I had this sort of, oh yeah, I'm glad I remembered to say this. I had this sort of loose plan to do Robin Mania, where I have a lot of patterns with American Robins, and I was thinking about just starting a whole bunch of them in May. Uh, the, yeah, I just, I'd have to gather them all and decide which ones I want to do and ask myself, do I really want to start that many more projects in May? So I don't know, I have this loose idea of maybe doing some Robin projects in May, but that's that's probably the only plan I have going forward. Uh, I had not stitching related. I had showed in my last video that I had bought this solar fountain, and I was going. I was taking a bunch of footage of the birds coming to this solar fountain, and I took hours and hours of video. And then I said I was going to upload that to my channel. So it's just kind of sort of an ASMR sort of relaxing watching birds at my fountain. And I had all that footage. And then I then it just, you know, like I said, November hit. And I just lost all interest in doing any kind of editing. And there was a lot of footage there. So I still have that footage. And I may post it because it's it's kind of peaceful and relaxing to watch, you know. Sometimes you just need something like that. Um, I have... Uh, some garden beds I, I bought some I don't have a lot of room in my yard to do some gardening but I bought some raised planters that I'll send a show a picture of there and I'm planning I've already assembled one and I'm gonna assemble the other one and buy some dirt and I bought some seeds and I'm gonna start some uh, different flower seeds to grow that it's kind of like gonna be like a cut flower garden so that I can just go out to my garden you know I imagine myself going out to the garden and snipping a bunch of cut flowers and putting it in a vase on my counter all year, all summer long, having beautiful flowers. That's my goal. I'm not, I don't have quite the green thumb. And so a lot of these, a lot of these flowers that I bought are first time I've ever grown them. I don't really know how they're going to do. I don't know. I don't know a lot. It's going to be an experiment, but I'm excited about that. I bought some little mini greenhouses and I'm going to start the seeds here real soon. So if you see some gardening pictures, seed starting on uh, Instagram. That's what that's all about. Um, what else non-stitching related? Um, so yeah, the gardening, the birds. I think, I think that's all that there is. I'm kind of trying to let this go so it's like a full hour. You know, got a couple minutes left. Um, and uh, hold on. And uh, as far as some new year's resolutions well okay one of them was going to be i was going to try to journal more we all know that didn't happen one other thing i was going to do is start walking more i used to be an avid walker i used to walk all the time especially when i owned dogs and then and then and before the pandemic and then i just really this year wanted to get back into just going on a daily walk and so starting january 1st i did and i have to say that i've stuck with it i've only missed a few just a handful of days and i blame that on sub-zero temperatures or blizzard conditions because I've really been trying to maintain a daily walk and I've been doing pretty good and a couple of times I even did go walking late at night in the snow through the neighborhood and it is like about the most serene thing a person can do is to walk in a snowstorm late at night it's so quiet and peaceful 
um, I just walk through my neighborhood so it's, and there's like street lights so it's lit I mean I wouldn't go probably to the park walking by myself at night but uh, it's it's a very peaceful thing I really enjoy doing that so I have been doing a lot of walking and uh, that's that's it I think I'm just rambling now um, I did maybe I'll mention this just in case in case you're like me and have recently, well, I wouldn't say recently, but have discovered ASMR videos. I don't remember what that acronym stands for. I mean, it's not new. It's all around. But at first I was like, okay, that's weird, you know. And then I started watching this one channel and I really like, because, you know, people are always talking about like crinkling in their videos that they don't like that. But I, li I always like to hear like, you know, crinkling in videos, you know, just kind of like that. You know, just anyway, I found this channel, Rebecca's, I don't know, I'll, I'll link it below, Rebecca's Beautiful ASMR. I love her channel because she does a lot of video where she's like just rummaging through like her purse or she goes, um, she'll like go to the Dollar Tree and she'll just like grab things off the shelves and crinkle them and yeah, I love her channel as far as ASMR and I find that at first, it's like, that's weird. So she does usually one where she will, like, crinkle things or rummage through things or play with keys or buttons or things like that. And I just find that stuff, like, immediately relaxes me. It's very, very soothing. But she does one where she'll talk, kind of like a whisper talk. And at first, I'm like, oh, I don't like that whispering. That That's, like, weird, you know. But she whispered. Then I started listening to some of them. And she has this way about her whispering that's not kind of annoying or creepy, creepy feeling. But she is just interesting to listen to because she kind of tells stories. She's a school bus driver. And she did this one where, I'm going to link it below. She walks through her house at Christmas time. And she shows all of her decor. And she kind of talks about, like, her ornaments and things like that. And her house is, if I could have my house decorated in any way, it would be the way it looks in this video. I love it. It's like those vintage, old-time kind of Santa, you know, just vintage vintage ornaments but she walks her house and there's like the fire cr crinkling and I have that video saved and I just listen I'll listen to it because if I wake up in the middle of the night if I wake up in the middle of the night I can't I find that I can't go back to sleep again unless I like put my headphone in and listen to an ASMR video because when I wake up at night my mind all automatically just goes to okay you're awake what are all the horrible things you can possibly think of and and think about those and then I can't go back to sleep I hate that. I, I hate that that happened. But so I'll just like, you know, stick my little earbud in and I'll put on her little ASMR video. And in like seconds, I'm asleep. You know, the first sound of the crinkle. <laughs> and I'm, I'm asleep. I don't know why. I can't. Yeah, I probably started a bad habit now because I used to be able to just go back to sleep. But now it's like, okay, what can I think about? I won't be able to go to sleep. And then you just, yeah, you think about it and your anxiety goes off the roof. So yeah, if you like ASMR, I will link that below and you can check out. I'll definitely link her Christmas tour video, but it's really interesting. So, okay, I have definitely reached an hour, so I'm going to call this good. Maybe it's not going to be quite an hour once I edit out, once I listen to this back and be like, wow, Chris, you really rambled. And I may just leave it as it is. So, okay. I'm not going to make any promises of when I'm going to be back, but I will be back. Let's just leave it at that. I'll be back. Okay. All right, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and uh, follow me on Instagram because I'm going to start posting more pictures. I'm not going to promise, but I am going to try to start posting more pictures and just getting back up on that horse again, you know? So, okay. All right, guys. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.